Next on Worcester News tonight, hunting concerns in a central Massachusetts town. A homeowner says his house was hit by a stray bullet. Plus, first responders and Surf Pro team up to raise money for the Ava Roy Fund. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. A lot of people may be enjoying a vacation during the holidays and we had a nice sunny day for the post Christmas shopping crowd, but there is stormy weather heading our way as we move towards the end of the week. Meteorologist Tim Kelly is here now with the first check of our forecast. Yeah, there is a storm brewing in the middle of the nation. A severe weather outbreak now in Texas, flooding in Oklahoma. Snow close to blizzard conditions will evolve in the plains and the rain snow line all the way down to El Paso, Texas. Then there's more energy off the Pacific, so we're fairly quiet. Although there is a burst of snow in northern New York, parts of northern Vermont. It's a weak front that's going to come in and that's going to weaken. I'm not expecting snow, but there are a couple of snow flakes in the air tonight with passing clouds and uh, colder air is coming in. Initially this evening, not as cold. Temperatures slowly fall through the 30s into the 20s, then kind of get stuck in the low 20s tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. It's about 23 degrees. The wind is mostly light. It's from the north initially. Uh, it may come in from the east a little bit as we go through the clock, through the time here. 11, 12 o'clock lunchtime. We're almost to freezing. Now, uh, that forecast is more for the airport. Downtown, we should get to about 34, 35. Then the clouds fill in. It's tomorrow night after midnight. Ice to rain on Friday. And then we'll talk about New Year's coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Tim. A West Boylston neighborhood is on edge. They are concerned the state is allowing hunting too close to their homes. One homeowner says he found a hunter's bullet inside his house. Our Chandler Walsh joins us live now from West Boylston with more. Chandler. Olivia, Gary Holland, who, whose home was hit, lives just yards from where hunters enter the woods to hunt. He says when the season began, he expected an incident like this would happen and is concerned if the hunting continues, something more serious could happen down the line. Gary Holland points to a bullet hole on the side of his house. He says it was left by a hunter in West Boylston this month. Holland and his family were at their Malden Street home when they heard three shots and knew one was too close for comfort. We investigated and I saw a bullet hole on the outside of the house and my daughter walked inside and she found the bullet on the floor in the kitchen. Holland says hunting isn't safe near the residential neighborhood and wants it to end for the safety of neighbors and their pets. He was expecting an incident like this would eventually happen. This particular hunter maybe was negligent or I've also heard the theory that this was a miracle bullet, uh, but either way, it doesn't make us feel feel any safer. Neighbors say this is the first time the state has allowed deer hunting in the area in decades. It's typical for residents like Kent Jaskowiak to see multiple deer in their yards. We understand they have to call the animals um, to keep the populations healthy, but I've gone down and seen some of the stands that you know, seem pretty close to the house. Some residents are also concerned about how the hunting will affect the value of their property. Holland says from time to time, hunters park in the area by his home and the sound of bullets flying in the woods isn't uncommon. We've kept everybody, uh, kept everybody inside. I mean, we've actually talked a little bit about wearing orange from walking to our car into the, uh, into the house. We have our animals here. We like to take walks out there and it's just a little unnerving to know that there might be somebody with a gun. The Department of Conservation and Recreation say they're aware of the incident. They say the Massachusetts Environmental Police are working with West Boylston Police to investigate further. Live in West Boylston, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester man is facing several charges. Auburn police say he broke into his girlfriend's home and assaulted her early Christmas morning. 30-year-old Hugo Solano was held without bail Wednesday at his arraignment. Police say officers arrived to the home on Rochdale Street shortly after 1 a.m. Christmas morning for a report of domestic disturbance. The female victim told police her boyfriend Solano had beaten her before throwing her Christmas tree off the porch and running into the woods. Police searched for about two hours before for finding the suspect, the victim suffered minor injuries. Solano is due back in court Monday for a dangerousness hearing. As Christmas wraps up, many drivers are heading home. Here's a look at traffic on the Mass Pike in Millbury early th earlier this afternoon. AAA estimated about one third of Americans will travel 
travel over an 11 day span during the holidays with close to two and a half million in Massachusetts alone. And with gas prices down two cents in Massachusetts, many people may choose to leave even earlier than usual. Today marks the beginning of the second phase of the holiday shopping season. Shoppers are heading to stores across central Massachusetts, exchange, exchanging unwanted presents and using their gift cards. At Dick's Sporting Goods in Worcester, customers say they are eager to use their Christmas presents right away and are either exchanging for the right item or using money they were given to buy new things. It's kind of exciting. We're always excited once you get a present that you really like to be able to wear it. So when the sizes might be wrong, it's nice to have it as soon as possible. I'm returning my Patagonia jacket for a different size. And a survey from the National Retail Federation finds 50% of consumers plan to take advantage of in-store holiday sales. Another 45% plan to do the same thing online. More than two weeks after a tragic fire claimed the life of a Worcester firefighter, thousands are step, stepping up to donate to a fund to help his young daughter. Our Gretchen LaRosa has the latest, including a fundraiser happening today. Fundraising efforts in memory of firefighter Christopher L. Roy have generated thousands of dollars. Roy left behind a nine-year-old daughter, Ava. You know, we're going to see if we, can, if we can raise a little bit more money for, for Ava. And by the nature of the event and the first responders, it's a... Uh, it's impossible not to uh, to think of her in, in a party like this. So. The Worcester Bravehearts baseball team is pairing up with ServPro, a company who provides services for disaster recovery to raise money for the Ava Roy Fund. It's in an effort to to appreciate the, the first responders we work closely with by the nature of our business. You know, obviously in the restoration industry, uh, we do quite a bit with, with fire damages and, uh, and water damages. The Bravehearts Fund had an initial goal of $5,000, but it has far exceeded their expectations. As of Wednesday, they had raised more than $15,000. A second grader who brought $5 in to her class about two weeks before Christmas, and they wanted that $5 to go towards the funds. Police officers and firefighters from all across Central Mass came together to support the fundraiser the day after Christmas. General Manager Dave Peterson says, to see the brotherhood firefighters have and the support they have for one another is remarkable. Just to see that visual of everyone lining Green Street for the funeral was just, it kind of makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. The Ava Roy Fund was set up by the Worcester Firefighters Union. I spoke with Lieutenant Tom Fitman earlier who said the support has been amazing. The fund has raised over $348,000 so far. He suspects that events in the next few days will continue to generate support for the Roy family. Gretchen LaRosa, Worcester News Tonight. National Grid and the Gas Workers Union returning to the negotiation table today as they try to reach an agreement to end the lockout. Both sides saying they would like to come to a deal by Friday. A bill is sitting on Governor Baker's desk. It would extend state unemployment benefits to those locked out workers. The bill would guarantee workers would continue to get the benefits past their initial unemployment period, which is scheduled to end next month. About 1,200 National Grid workers have been locked out since the summer. On Beacon Hill, there's a new proposal which would prevent employers from firing workers for using marijuana on their own time. Even though recreational marijuana is legal in Massachusetts, workers can still be fired for using it. According to the Boston Globe, the new bill would treat marijuana much like alcohol, and under the measure, employers could still fire someone who comes to work impaired, but they can't police the private use of marijuana. Today is the first day Worcester residents can drop off their Christmas trees. Three drop-off sites are open throughout the city until January 6. There is one on Millbury, Chandler and Clark Streets. The city says Christmas trees should only be dropped off when city staff are present. Dropping trees off when staff and tra trucks are not there is considered illegal dumping. The sites are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 3 and Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 4.